Hey everyone, welcome back, it is Caleb. This video we are going to be talking about some of the technologies that are being advertised and some of the different tools behind this whole machine learning movement. The very first thing that I want to define is big data. So this is, you know, a big word out there, right? So this, this is like, whew, if you put hashtag big data in your Twitter, man, <laughs> you're gonna go viral. I mean, this is like so big. Okay, so what is big data? Essentially, big data is getting all of your data into one location so you can run queries and analytics on your data. So this is the equivalent to the data set that I've been using in the previous videos. So big data is getting all of your data into one location. Whether it came from a database, you know, this, this, that's a database, by the way. <laughs> or it came from some spreadsheets or, I don't know, other places. <laughs> All this data gets co combined into one thing <laughs> and we can run analytics on it now. So when you're dealing with big data, you're often going to be using something like a data warehouse. I actually haven't talked about data warehouses on this YouTube channel yet, I don't think. So that's pretty cool. We're going to learn something new here today. A data warehouse is sort of like a database, but it's designed for analytical processing. So there's two real types of processing when we're talking about databases or data processing. One is transactional and the other is analytical. A transactional data store would be efficient and good for a system such as a web store where you're buying things and selling things. That's because we're going to be having a lot of little inserts and updates and deletes. Whereas an analytical system, that is more designed for the select statement and it would not be optimal for a web store. So these are kind of two different types of systems out there. The data warehouse is good for analytical processing. So oftentimes you will have a database powering a website, for example, and that's going to be optimized for transactional. And then we're going to extract that data and put it into a data warehouse where it's optimized for analytical. And that's where we're going to using, that's where we're going to be using processing to run analytics on that data. Some data systems have both of these combined and that's kind of cool. Uh, I'm not really going to get into that a whole lot, but essentially for this series, you just need to know that we're going to get all of our data into one location where it is optimized for analytical processing. Now, this process, taking data from, let's say we have a transactional database, taking it and putting it into an analytical database, such as a data warehouse or just a database optimized for analytics, this is known as the ETL process. So this is short for extract, transform, and load. So if you think of each one of these pieces here, they all have data. And they're not all of the right format for this data warehouse. So we're going to extract that data, we're gonna transform it into the right format, and then we're going to load it into the data warehouse. So once again, that was Extract, transform, load. Yeah, pretty cool. There are a lot of other cool technologies out there that might be useful for you. For example, there's something called Hadoop. Now I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Hadoop with the emphasis on the ha. <laughs> I'm not positive, but I have quite the history of mispronouncing things. So I actually looked this one up and I'm convinced. But some people say Hadoop or Hadoop doesn't really matter. So Hadoop is a storage system allowing you to store all different kinds of data formats and running analytics on that. This is less of a database and more of a file system. So you will definitely want to learn more about that as I need to as well. So maybe we'll get into that someday. But for now, just know that if you want to skip the ETL process, you may want to look into something like Hadoop. There are a lot of extensions or versions of Hadoop that are optimized for machine learning where you can bypass that ETL process and work with various different formats. Another thing that's pretty cool is called database federation. 
This is a trick. Haha, <laughs> it's a trick, okay? So it's like when you talk to one database, but you're really talking to multiple databases. So you have one interface that's going to communicate with multiple databases. So it simulates having all of the data in one location. And you can write a query as if you're talking to one database, but the data is going to come from multiple databases. Once again, this is called federation. All right, so that is just kind of an overview of the different technologies that you might run into when you're talking about machine learning. I also gave you a brief introduction of what each one was and how they worked. So hopefully that'll help you in future projects or if you just hear these words out there and you're not really sure what they are, now you have a brief understanding. So thank you guys and I will see you in the next video. It's gonna be a fun one, so catch you there.